In the previous video, we shared how Chinese photovoltaics fell from grace to the bottom. If it were in a free market economy, Chinese photovoltaics might have had no chance of recovery after such a setback. Fortunately, China has advantages that many countries don't, national guidance and regulation. Under normal circumstances in a market economy, the rise and fall of businesses are natural. However, these photovoltaic enterprises in China were associated with millions of jobs, hundreds of billions of dollars in capital and the potential for China to secure a leading position in future energy. The first measure taken was a lifeline. To address the funding challenges faced by photovoltaic enterprises, several major Chinese banks formed a consortium, providing a credit limit of $47 billion to support the industry. This helped Chinese photovoltaics survive the darkest moments and preserved the spark of technology. However, relying solely on financial support was a temporary solution and didn't address the root issues. The major problem for Chinese photovoltaics was the small domestic market, preventing the formation of a profit development positive cycle. The solution was to find ways to expand the domestic market, considering the substantial market size of a population of 1.4 billion. In 2009, the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Science and Technology, and the National Energy Administration jointly released a notice on implementing the Golden Sun Demonstration Project, with an expected investment of 10 billion renminbi. This initiative aimed to assist the photovoltaic industry in grid connection through financial subsidies. However, the focus was not solely on photovoltaic enterprises, it also included independent photovoltaic projects in remote, off-grid areas. The primary objective was to bring electricity to remote areas, significantly improving living and production conditions, as part of China's poverty alleviation plan. In the past, photovoltaic prices were inflated, making them unaffordable domestically. With the subsequent drop in photovoltaic prices, the opportunity arose to implement the plan, coincidentally saving a batch of photovoltaic enterprises. The subsidy proportion for this investment was quite substantial, 50% for photovoltaic power generation projects and 70% for independent photovoltaic systems in remote areas. It was these subsidies that helped Chinese photovoltaic enterprises survive the darkest times. However, surviving wasn't enough, they needed to grow. In July 2013, the State Council issued several opinions on promoting the healthy development of the photovoltaic industry. Measures were proposed at various levels, including pricing, financial subsidies, taxation, project management, and grid management, to promote the healthy development of the photovoltaic industry. Especially noteworthy was the shift in the development focus of the photovoltaic industry towards expanding the domestic market and improving technological levels. The photovoltaic installed capacity target for the next two years was raised by 66%, and photovoltaic enterprises were encouraged to concentrate in resource-rich regions in the central and western parts of the country. In August of the same year, Further improvements were made to the pricing policy for photovoltaic power generation projects. The introduction of the electricity price subsidy marked China's entry into an era where domestic market-oriented electricity subsidies played a crucial role, sparking a wave of domestic photovoltaic power generation investments. Over the next two years, numerous photovoltaic enterprises, which had suffered setbacks in overseas markets, flocked to western China. Various photovoltaic power stations sprang up, and the industrial chain, which had suffered severe losses due to the double reverse, was to some extent repaired. From then on, the scale of Chinese photovoltaic installations began to enter a fast lane of exponential growth. In 2013, the newly added installed capacity surpassed 10 million kilowatts for the first time, exceeding the total of the previous five years. By the end of 2015, China's cumulative photovoltaic installed capacity reached 43.18 million kilowatts, surpassing Germany and becoming the world's number one. China continued to lead globally in the subsequent years. The second measure was a market counterattack, forcing technological upgrades. Relying solely on subsidies was evidently insufficient. In the scenario of high-quality polysilicon dependence on imports, Pouring in more money would only result in Western countries harvesting most of the profits. 
To break free from the cycle of low-end assembly in Chinese photovoltaics, a change was imperative. The opportunity came in 2014. The United States ruled in a double-reverse investigation against China, claiming significant dumping and subsidy behavior, initiating a second double-reverse investigation. In response, China retaliated promptly. It banned the import of polysilicon through processing trade. Chinese photovoltaic enterprises were compelled to invest in research and development. Firstly, there was granular silicon, represented by companies like PolyGCL. Secondly, there was monocrystalline silicon, with Longi as the representative. Over a decade ago, monocrystalline silicon wafer prices were around 100 yen per piece, and now they are just over 3 yen. After 16 years of technological development and capacity layout, Longi Green Energy's market share in monocrystalline silicon wafers and modules has firmly secured its global leadership. PolyGCL and Longi are just a glimpse of Chinese photovoltaic enterprises climbing the technological peak. Today, Chinese photovoltaic enterprises have broken the monopoly of diamond wire cutting technology, which had been dominated by Japanese manufacturers for many years. For every 10 micrometers reduction in the diamond wire diameter, the cost of a single silicon wafer decreases by approximately 15 sun, production capacity increases by about 4%, and silicon wafer cutting speed increases by 300%, saving the industry more than 30 billion yen in costs annually. Not only in raw materials but also in production equipment, China has broken the monopoly of foreign enterprises. From the production of silicon materials, silicon wafer processing, cell and module production to testing equipment and simulators related to the photovoltaic industry chain, China has the ability to provide complete sets of equipment. Currently, 95% of the string welding machines in newly added production lines in the Chinese market have become domestically produced, while industry-leading foreign companies like Comax from the United States, NPC from Japan, and Toyama have exited the string welding machine market due to high product prices. The third measure was to drive demand from the usage side. With solutions for production in place, there were still challenges on the usage side. Photovoltaic power generation, unlike coal and oil, doesn't belong to mineral resources, it's a low-density energy source that requires ample installation space. The question then arises, where to find suitable installation space if solar energy is to be vigorously developed? Apart from installing in sparsely populated areas in the northwest, it is necessary to fully utilize industrial parks, corporate factories, logistics warehouses, public buildings, transportation facilities, residential houses, and other suitable locations. According to the principle of build where suitable, active efforts were made to carry out photovoltaic project construction. The fourth measure was subsidy reduction to drive progress. On May 31, 2018, the National Development and Reform Commission and other relevant departments jointly issued a notice. This new policy marked a significant change, the feed-in tariff for photovoltaic power would be further reduced, and electricity subsidies would be tightened. The ultimate goal was to achieve zero subsidies after 2021, allowing photovoltaic power to compete freely with other forms of generation such as thermal and wind power. This policy, known as the 531 New Policy, had a profound impact on the industry. Companies without core technology and facing high costs, relying solely on government subsidies for survival, were forced to exit. This indirectly allowed industry giants with core technology and cost advantages to gain more market share. The effectiveness of the 531 new policy speaks for itself. Looking at the achievements of China's photovoltaic industry today explains everything. As of the end of 2022, China's photovoltaic and wind power installed capacity had exceeded 700 million kilowatts, consistently ranking first globally for 10 consecutive years. The photovoltaic grid-connected installed capacity reached 390 million kilowatts, maintaining its global leadership for eight consecutive years. Distributed photovoltaics reached 107.5 million kilowatts, surpassing 100 million kilowatts and accounting for about one-fourth of the total grid-connected installed capacity. Photovoltaics serve as a prime example of economies of scale. China, with its vast market, 
has witnessed a continuous decrease in costs as production volumes increase in the mass production of photovoltaic products. Coupled with China's low labor costs and a sufficiently large industrial system, this has allowed the industry to leverage economies of scale to minimize costs. Foreign companies, no matter how hard they try, cannot compete. This is the underlying logic of why China has been victorious in strategic industries like photovoltaics and new energy, it is also an embodiment of China's institutional advantages. When China's photovoltaic industry turned its attention overseas again, it was surprising to find that no foreign company could compete with China on costs. Today, with the expiration of the European Union's double reverse measures and the minimum import price MIP, for Chinese photovoltaics, Chinese photovoltaics have begun a significant expansion in the European market. At this point, Chinese photovoltaics have become an industry giant covering the entire upstream, midstream, and downstream of the photovoltaic industry. This is the story of the rebirth of Chinese photovoltaics. Like many industries, starting from the low end, experiencing a rush to expand, and dealing with speculation and subsidy fraud, Chinese photovoltaics ultimately made it through. They have turned a seemingly weak hand into a trump card and are now proudly dominating the world. China, with a shortage of oil and gas, has a high dependence on overseas energy, becoming a crucial factor affecting national security. The Malacca Dilemma is a Damocles sword hanging over China's head, ready to fall at any time. For this reason, China has invested significant efforts in projects like the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, Gwadar Port, China-Kyrgyzstan-Uzbekistan Railway, China-Russia Pipeline, etc., all aimed at ensuring energy security. However, these efforts still rely on people. The only aspect not constrained by external forces is China's photovoltaics. Currently, China has started planning to build a 450 million kilowatt large-scale wind and photovoltaic base in deserts, Gobi, and barren areas. This is equivalent to the power generation capacity of three Three Gorges dams. It is estimated that by 2050, photovoltaics will replace coal-fired power and become China's second-largest clean energy source. Regarding the ups and downs of China's photovoltaic development, we have briefly shared the story. For more stories, please continue to follow our channel. Until next time.